Hello everyone, Shell here of the Wanderbots, and welcome to the Cosmic Wheel Sisterhood. This is a bewitching game by Deconstruct Team, and it is published by Devolver Digital, who kindly reached out to us to feature this beautiful narrative divination game. Aside from having gorgeous pixel art, the Cosmic Wheel Sisterhood allows you to craft a tarot-like deck of your own, which potentially has the power to steer the fate of our main character and their companions. Well, without further ado, let us begin the Cosmic Wheel Sisterhood. Eternal Void, heed the words of a prisoner. I beg of you, send me a curse to break this immortal isolation. Hear the chant my mentor once forbid me to recite. Stranger to my soul, invade my body. Stranger to my soul, invade my mind. Grant me an eye to see beyond my torment. Take my pride, my sorrow, my chains. Turn them into power, wisdom, revenge. Stranger to my soul, invade my magic. Stranger to my soul, become my faith. That's a beautiful song. It feels great to be awakened again. Hmm. Who are you? Oh, wow. Look at this. So, there she is on this isolated... Uh, is it like an asteroid floating in space? With this tree growing out the roof. But who is this? She's summoning someone. He looks very serpentine or maybe even like a scorpion has all these arms and limbs and of course the three eyes that we saw initially so fortuna they must be the, the main character the protagonist my name is fortuna i'm a witch why did you summon me abramar Ooh. because i would rather lose my pride than my sanity sounds fun tell me more I was condemned to exile by the leader of my coven. Today marks the 200th year of my millennium-long sentence. Whoa, wait a minute. She was exiled for a thousand years? And she's only served a fifth of her sentence? What did she do? And... I can't take it anymore. I need your help. What do you use as a clock? Humanity's Cradle, Planet Earth. Oh, 200 human years. That's quite some time. I feel you. I have been imprisoned for 5,402 years until you summoned me. 5,000, oof. Isolation can really do a number on you. I will help you. I shall become your familiar. Thank you, Abramar. Now get comfortable. We are going to seal a contract. Ooh, look at this. So, this is where she lives then. Looks like she has a number of potions, uh, an oven, uh, of course a cauldron. And what else do we have around here? The staircase leading downward. Ooh. Yeah, she has a mirror. She has some books. This is peculiar, though. I, I wonder what those are. There's five of them at a doorway. Is it a portal, perhaps? Or who knows? First of all, allow me to express my gratitude. I am really thankful you freed me from my cosmic prison. Um, of course. You're welcome. Is something the matter? Oh, look at that. I didn't realize that before, but he has eyes in his chest as well. And of course, he's coiled around her abode now. Look at those flames, too. 
Not really. It's just that after all the reading I did about behemoths, I didn't expect your behavior to be so... mundane? Behemoths. I used to say behemoth when I was a kid, but then I found out that it's in fact behemoths, but... So a behemoth, as opposed to a demon or uh, other cosmic creatures, yeah, I suppose it makes sense. Speaking so mundane, yeah. <laughs> Whoa, mundane? That hurt. Oh, maybe it's because he isn't speaking... Uh, oh, well, as she's saying here, archaic poetry. Oh, um, I mean, you're still intimidating, but I always pictured you speaking in an archaic poetry or something like that. Ah, that makes sense. He is really casual with his speech. <laughs> I like you. Ooh, look at those fangs. Definitely serpentine. I like you so much. I'm going to let you pick the terms of our contract. You will still have to pay a high price for my magic, though. I'm well aware of that. I won't back off. Alright. Then let's begin your training. The ceremony is five days long. Let me know when you're ready to begin. Right now. <laughs> ah, you're already my favorite master. The first day is the easiest one, an interview, so we can get to know each other. Lesson one, admittance. Tell me about yourself. What is your speciality? Or specialty, I should say. I'm a fortune teller makes sense. Her name is Fortuna, after all. Oh, one of my favorites. Would you mind doing a reading for me? I can't. As part of my sentence, Adana banished my tarot deck. Oh, really? So, uh, she used a, a tarot deck for her fortunes, then, to read the future. Adana is the leader of my coven. Wow, you must have done something really grave to get exiled and deprived of your magic. I... I foretold the falling of my coven. Bleak. But how are your visions your fault? After my premonition, the coven was consumed by despair. Many witches came to me for counsel to prepare before the end times. The thing, though, is... If she's foretelling the falling of the coven, wouldn't that be something that they could use to potentially avert its demise? It, why was she punished for, for warning them? But I suppose the consumed by despair means that uh, instead it, it has the adverse effect of instead of trying at all, they, they ceased to try anything. Etana didn't like that. She holds supreme authority over her coven, so she decided to exile me to this wandering asteroid. Our leader determined that even if all covens must fall eventually, advertising their demise only pushes the catastrophe forward. Adana decided my power posed a great danger to the peace inside our coven. She concluded that I had to learn to reason, instead of relying exclusively on my gift. So, I was sentenced to meditate for a millennium, deprived of my deck. Meditate for a millennium? How, how's that to correct anything? And also, if she foretold the falling of the coven, how would banishing her help? Would she be useful in determining how that was to come about or when? Because if she's banished for a thousand years, the fall of the coven could occur in the interim and there'd be nothing that they could do to stop it. I don't know, it doesn't make sense to me. Since I'm here, I deduce that you don't agree with your leader's judgment. She was afraid of my influence. Many of our sisters put their trust in my advice. I'm sure that Hag thought I was undermining her supremacy and decided to cast me out. You sure sound sour about it. 
Would you kill her should you have the chance? Oof. I mean, a millennium is a long time to get exiled in this fashion, but uh, presuming she's immortal and such, eh, I don't think it's necessarily deserving of death, nor would Fortuna or should Fortuna be the one to meet out that, that end. No. Isolation didn't eat away at your mercy yet, I see. Hmm. Okay. I will help you recover your powers. Will you get me a new tarot deck? Tarot? <laughs> no. I mean, tarot is cute, but it is too human-centric to grasp the hidden truths of the cosmos. With the um, tarot deck, for those of you who are unfamiliar with it, they're essentially a, a set of cards, almost like what you would have for traditional playing cards. And actually, traditional playing cards are derived from many of these old decks, but the tarot deck, in addition to having the four suits, also has arcana. They're the ones that you may have seen uh, across the internet. There's communities of artists that really like to make their own renditions of tarot cards. So there would be, say, the magician or the fool or the empress or the world, the chariot, fortune, uh, so many more, strength, temperance, things of that nature. And yeah, so with the major arcana especially, uh, there are methods that they would use to uh, do, do fortune readings and such, but too human-centric, Abramar says. You will create your own deck. Ooh, that sounds fun. My own deck? I wouldn't even know where to begin. Shh, shh, leave the details to me. That is what these five days of training are for. You're going back to which school, Fortuna? For this training, we'll review the four basic elements of magic. Air, water, earth, and fire. Oh, yeah, so the classical elements. Oh, no. Oh, don't worry. It'll be fun. Plus, you'll get to seal a contract with me for each of those energies. I wonder then if other witches, if they have familiars, if the familiars are only capable of granting them a singular element. It seems like Abermar is offering all four. So he must be incredibly powerful. Now, get some rest. Tomorrow, we will start the invisible energy air. Ooh. We'll begin with air then. Lesson two, context. Oh, I love that him wrapping around. First day of school. Are you nervous? To be honest, I'm just happy to be able to hear something other than my own voice. Ha, huh. that's cool. Today, we are going to talk about air. I'm going to focus on what will be useful for creating our own divination deck. Understood. Air represents the invisible, the negative space, that which imbues everything. Air is the collective subconscious, energy within a community, the ecosystem. Air is everything that surrounds us. Air is... Context. Exactly. Master your air and you will acquire unparalleled awareness. There is power in knowing one's place. Even when isolated, you are one with the cosmos. Now, for the first part of our contract, we will seal our air energies together. Yes, please. As I promised, I will let you decide the nature of every seal. You just need to answer a question. But careful. Your answers will affect your fate dramatically. Ooh, look at that smile. I'm ready. For the air seal. How do you want to be perceived? 
Ooh, so there's the I want to be feared, I want to be adored, and I want to be pitied. Well, I, I don't want to lean for the I want to be feared, because there's that old adage of better to be feared than to be loved, or something along those lines, because to incite fear in others is to be powerful, but I don't, I don't think that we'd want to follow the path of striking fear into the hearts of others. Now, I want to be adored. That's interesting. And I want to be pitied. The thing about the I want to be adored is, is it really going to be genuine? Everyone's going to have admiration and love for you, but is it going to be for you, for who you really are, or is it going to be about what their perceptions of you are? Is it... And then, of course, you're going to have all these expectations to live up to, and... Is that really what you want to be? And then there's the, I want to be pitied. Uh, I mean... That's an interesting one. Because to be pitied means that... Others are going to feel for you. They're going to want to empathize with you and and act kindly towards you. So it's not quite the same as to be adored. To be pitied means that you're might more likely than not going to be afforded some kindness, but it's not going to be out of genuine care or affection. It, it might be they I mean obviously they'll they'll feel badly for you that the circumstances of your life have led you to a fate that they wouldn't want for themselves and therefore you are this sad reflection that reminds them of what could go wrong in their own lives and yeah it hmm I want to be pitied it's not the same as being adored I still don't want to do fear but you know what Fortuna has been locked away in this in this vast void, just relegated to these two rooms all this time, and Abramar is the first being that she's been able to speak with in 200 years. I don't know. I, I personally think that she should be pitied. I don't necessarily believe that Fortuna should want to be pitied, but to be feared or to be adored... I don't know, I think this is the most intriguing of all three. And I wonder how this is going to influence the story. Want to be pitied. You're that desperate for tender loving care, huh? It is good that you're sincere, though. In any case, bear in mind that pity can get you protection, but you will rarely be respected. Ooh, that's a good line, yeah, protection. So. If they pity pity you, then they will want to defend you. They will want to help and aid you, but you will rarely be respected because if you're pitied, then you're seen as lesser. Well, that definitely makes sense. But at the same time, they're not necessarily looking up to you with the adoration or the fear. Hmm. I understand. Allow me to seal our air energies together, then. Ah, that, that hurt. That felt good. Can't you feel the power? Yes, I, I feel it, but I also felt like I was tearing apart. Well, girl, I am a behemoth after all. What did you expect? I know, I know. I can take it. Good. Now, focus on that bit of air energy we unlocked. We're going to use it to create our first card. I notice you have a ceremonial tokonoma for witchcraft in the basement. Tokonoma? I wonder what that is. Head over there and I will teach you to create cards. Oh, so this is the tokonoma. Oh, and those must be the cards. Interesting. 
Let's go down. Oh, those are that that's Abramar's eyes there. Create a card. This is the Arcane Grimoire. Here you'll acquire magic images that can be used to craft your cards. There are three types. Spheres, for the backgrounds. Arcana, for the main figure on the card. And symbols, to add some magic pizzazz to your compositions. They all cost magic energy to summon. Right now, you can only acquire air type elements because we've only unlocked the air seal. But you can go ahead and browse the grimoire to savor your future creations. <laughs> Ooh, so we have an opera house that magnifies the emotions of anything sung in its chambers. To air. Quicksand graveyard, magical cemetery for the witches who dare to tamper with time, absorbs the bodies and burns their souls. So there's five. Oh, let me look at that. That looks like another air. Oh. You know, earth, water. Yeah, definitely. So for the classical elements, they're having it fire with the line on top, air with the line on its side and it's pink, earth with the line on the bottom and it's gold, and then water with the line on its side and it's water. Typically in, in the depictions of the classical elements, it's a triangle and it's an upward facing triangle for fire, a downward facing triangle for water. And then a downward triangle for earth with a line across the bottom and then a line across the top an upward triangle for air so instead they're having them all be diamonds but they still have the line crossing at different sections of it yeah looks like there's a lot of lore here i'm going to be skipping this at least for the well, just to shorten the length of the video but yeah these are really interesting i like the illustrations the road the desert Shipwreck Library. Lost Knowledge collects every letter. Oh, that's why there's all the little letter bottles. The battlefield. War is meaningless. Yeah, so it looks like we'll only be able to focus on the ones... Ooh! Nomad Sky Caravan. It looks like we'll only be able to focus on the ones that are air. We do have nine air energy, but... Hmm. You know, I think I actually do like the opera house. I, I love purple and there seems to be an owl or a bird motif going on there. I also love the theater. So yeah, let's select that. Ooh, so select arcane. So we have the seed of knowledge that that's a creepy creature, but we don't have the proper energy for it. We need an earth and a water. Ooh. The Harpy Herald. I mean, that one's all wind, so it's plausible. Interesting. Won't be able to create that. The Shaman. Well, that's something unique. Also for air. <laughs> a, a pilot from the Mechana cult? So we have a mech. Oh, you might be able to put different bodies on him, but an artisan, a glass blower, wolf mother and children. The Duchess of Solace. She looks like a dominatrix. Oh, actually it does say there, right in the name. Pyre of the Heretic. The Banner Bearer. Oh, it looks like a little, oh, it's a mouse. The Forbidden Door to Pleasure. It's all water, though. Earth for the dragon. That's a, a fairly even mix. But a little wolf that looks like he's a motorcyclist? Coyote Glenslinger. Oh, Deerfolk Paladin. This guy's very elegant. But also all Earth. The bartender. The avian dancer. The florist. The astronaut. Though I like the moth theme to them. The Fallen Hero. 
Well, since we only have air, we're pretty much just stuck with either the shaman or the harpy. I do like harpies. So I'll go select her. And then we have the shovel, the bottomless jugs, the asteroid, the ruby candle lamp, the onyx trumpet. Well, that one's air. The cane of sacred wood, ether wings, glass trident, the garushkikushik, what? Minister of Secrets, Obsidian Sledgehammer, Fire Whip of Dominance, Igniting Saber, Arbiter Book, oh that one's air, like all the moon symbols associated with it, the Jade Road Keepers, the Blue Light Torch, the Inevitable Three, the Tower Shield, Swordfish Liqueur, the Hunter Witch Rifle, Ooh, the dark matter bow. I like the idea of a harpy with a bow. And that is air. So, yeah. Let's select that. Now, build your first card. You can move the background and drag, rotate, or scale the images around. Add as many images as you want from the stock at the side of the card. Don't worry. It won't cost you extra energy. Put your soul into it. Oh, wow, this is wonderful. So looks like I'll actually be able to design the card by what? Yeah, clicking and dragging different components. Though it looks like there are some that you have to include. Now, I know this will take some time. So what I'll do for the rest of this video is I will have a, a time lapse fast forwarding through my process and we'll see how it goes. All right, let's finish this up. And we have the standing ovation. The meaning of a card varies depending on which elements you combine. Air elements lean towards relationships, community, and karma. Pay attention to your studies so that you can tune your divination style towards the ideas you fancy the most. It can be tricky in the beginning. The only way to master this is through experience. Ooh, so what do we have here? The chambers of the opera house make all meanings resonate through every context. A strong avatar for justice, imbued with purpose, a dark matter arrow can't be touched but will be heard. A hurricane of air energy will stir luck and call for the unexpected. Meanings, leadership, purpose, justice, predestination, and luck. Okay, that's interesting. I like that card creation mechanic. It's really interesting and with all the cards there and I assume that with every seal that we open we're going to get more elements we'll be able to have access to more of the cards then. Did you like it? Looks promising. It's a bit confusing or I prefer tarot. Uh, I think it's promising. Looks promising. Feels way more complex than tarot but I can sense its potential. Good. We're only just getting started. It will all make more sense when you try your hand at reading them. We'll wait until you've made at least two cards, though. <laughs> There's not a lot of predestination in shuffling a single card. <laughs> ah. I'm sorry. You must be tired. Go to bed and review the fundamentals of air. Tomorrow, we will unlock your water. Thank you, Abramar. Thanks to you, Fortuna. I will make you happy. I promise. Good night. Ooh. Do not be afraid of him. Become his master.
Lesson 3. Emotion. O Fortuna, each day me cometh to teach us thee. For breatheth is the cosmos, and my and eternal thy grief. Wait a minute. Is he... Is he starting to fall into old English? Oh, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, I thought I could get more in character to satisfy your expectations. I'd rather focus on our studies. Oh, come on. You're not the only one excited about being able to talk to somebody after internal imprisonment. Loosen up a bit. Habermar, let's get on with my studies, please. Enough, I command you to focus, or... Holy familiar, which charm art we studying today? Definitely this. I, I think I want to humor him. Holy familiar, which charm art we studying today? I wonder what what? Is that what, essentially? What charm? <laughs> what? <laughs> uh. Colors me. Art thee well? <laughs> oh, stop, stop. I give up. Now come here and teach me your magic. <laughs> Even joking around doesn't stop you from being intense. Okay, focus Abramar. Let's begin today's lesson. The second element we will unlock is water. Water represents substance, meaning, the hidden nature of things. Water comes in many shapes, purpose, desire, willpower. Water is everything that lives inside of you. Water is... Emotion. And that's a good synthesis, yes. Master your water, and you will have the key to any heart and soul. There's power in empathy and self-awareness. Water isn't my forte, but I understand. Yeah, I noticed that. Oh, emotion is her weakness then? But don't worry, I am here to support you. Now, for the second part of our contract, we will seal our water energies together. Yes, please. Again, you decide the nature of our contract. Answer this question. And remember, your answers will affect your fate dramatically. I know, I know. For the water seal, what is your innermost desire? So there's power, romance, or knowledge. Hmm, I mean, I definitely know which one I'm going to choose right off the bat. It's definitely going to be knowledge, but I suppose going through these power, I mean, it makes sense. A acquiring power means that you acquire status, the ability to exert your control over others and, and probably your magic if you're a witch in this case. And that, yeah, power definitely opens a lot of doors and possibilities. But is it really your innermost desire? And usually it comes at a cost. Romance. So, yes, I... I... Pretty much everyone I know. At least, and this is very true with me when I was young. Before I met Wander, it was always... I was always called a hopeless romantic. I never fathomed that I would ever fall in love. I mean, Wander is, I suppose, thankful that we ended up together. And I am too. But it's one of those things where, yeah, yearning for romance, your innermost desire, definitely about that partnership, that feeling of belonging with someone else. The one thing about that, though, is with romance is, is it going to be, is it truly the end all be all for their ambitions, their innermost desire? And also... Like what we were exploring before with the whole 
uh, to be adored, to be feared. Uh, definitely the whole power kind of goes along with the to be feared. Romance, I think, would be along the lines of adored. That means that you're, you're placing your value in someone else, in a way, just like the adoration one. And so knowledge, knowledge is useful regardless of, of any circumstance, that knowledge can be power in its own way. And then knowledge, it can be knowledge about yourself, about the workings of the universe, uh, about biology and sciences, and knowledge brings so much with it. So, innermost desire. I mean, I could tell that you know, with a witch, with her even being a fortune teller too, knowledge would just be right up her alley. It's about gaining understanding and knowledge of, well, in her case, the, the future or people's fates and destinies. So I would assume that knowledge would be the one that would be best. Knowledge. Oh, knowledge. That's not a common desire. But it makes sense. Enlightenment is a mighty resource for a witch. Can't wait to see what you'll make of new knowledge. Although, be careful not to stumble onto one of those cosmic truths that are better left unknown. Don't want my favorite witch to lose her mind. Ooh, so... As in, a terrible truth, a cosmic horror? Now... I have a question. Hmm? When will all the contracts we've been sealing become effective? Immediately. I mean, they are etched into the cosmic wheel as we speak. Ooh, isn't it the cosmic wheel sisterhood? So, the cosmic wheel, I wonder what that is. In time, it will all come to you. And you will be pretty aware of the moment that they're delivered. I see. I can tell you one thing for sure. They'll come to you in the same order that we sealed them. Oh, so... With air, we had the... I want to be feared, adored, or pitied, and we ended up choosing the pity. And then this one, it's... Do you want power, knowledge... Uh, well, power, romance, or knowledge. And we chose knowledge, so that means that... Are these major arcs of the story, and that, yeah, we'll experience each of these in order. Hmm. First, you'll feel the community switch to start to pitying you. Sometime after, you'll discover a new source of knowledge. Then, whatever we seal on your Earth will happen. And finally, in the distant future, you'll pay the price we agree on in the fire seal. A price, huh? Everything you've asked for will come at a price. I guess your summoning spell is forbidden for a reason, huh? Having second thoughts? No. I need this. Seal the second contract already. Brace yourself. Yep, there's the blue for water. Ah! My bones! <laughs> really? Woohoo! I, I can't imagine a giant behemoth just going woohoo. Woohoo! Girl, you have power. I just hope this torture is worth it. It will be. Have faith. Can I make a new card now? Yes. Same as yesterday. Head to the basement. All right. Going down to see what's up. So that's our existing deck. Let's create a card. All right, yeah, this is a peculiar one. Just decided to have the odd door with all these jugs 
pouring into the water with the mirrored fish. The fish had to be there somewhere. But I liked this Saturn -like planet. I could have gone with a lot of the statues, have the jugs dangling from their hands and whatnot, but this just seemed a little bit more surreal. Nirvana. Whispers from the undone jade witches imbue this card with emotion. The door holds the promise for quenching many kinds of thirst. The ever-flowing water from the jugs represents inner desire. A flood of water can unleash hidden potentials. Introspection, yearning, passion, power. Now, come upstairs. You're going to read the cards for me. Wait, what? But I only have two cards at my disposal, the standing ovation and Nirvana. I don't know what possibly I'll be able to glean from this. I would assume that in order to be able to tell someone's fortune, you'd have to have at least three cards. Time for some divination. This is your area of expertise, so you guide me through this. Okay. A card reading with just two cards, huh? Hmm. We'll need to test if these really work. So I'll do a reading that we can confirm on the spot. I'm going to read your past. Whoa, that's bold. I like it. I'm ready. Ahem. It's been a couple of centuries without my deck. I may be a little rusty. You just enjoy it. You're among friends here. Okay. It's going to be a very simple reading. I'm going to draw a card and place it on the spot to read into your past. Here we go. Wait, she has more cards than just the two. Ooh, we got Nirvana. Okay. We assign it to the past slot. You... You are older than this universe, or your first love was with was a witch named Gloria? Oh, and look at this. It it influences what we get. So there's air and water or there's just water. What do I want to get? The problem is, these might be the only elements that I get going into the next round. So I'd probably want a mixture of air and water so that I have... Uh, we're probably going to get earth or fire next time around. I think he did mention earth, though. Oh, I really want the juicy details of him being in love with a witch named Gloria, but... You are older than the universe. Really? How is that possible? I'm definitely going to have to find out about that later, but I don't want just water. I want one more water and a little bit of air. You are older than the universe. Wow, these cards pierce deep. I wasn't expecting you to get such a revelation on your first draw. I'm proud of you. Thank you, but what does this mean? How can anyone proceed the Big Bang? Hmm. This is a hard one to explain through language. You know that the universe is expanding, right? Right. Well, the universe expands over something. Or, I should say, over nothing. I don't know how to put this into any words that you know. But basically, I existed before this universe. At some point, the universe you live in grew around me, and I was subjected to its rules. Before we are captured by a universe, behemoths live without shape, without mass, without time. Are there other universes besides this one, then? Yes. What are they like? unfathomable by any language or code developed within this universe's rules. Uh... Don't think too much about it, or you will lose your mind. In any case, this extra-universal nature is where my power comes from. Magic is but an extensive understanding of how reality works. I... uh... wow. 
Let's get back to your training. Ah, yeah, look at that. So now we have two water and three air. Wow. What was that? I felt an energy surge. That is your deck harvesting energy. Whenever you do a reading, you'll harvest magic akin to the card you drew. Fortune telling will be your main source of energy once we seal our pact. I see. All right. The cards work. They work like a charm, I must say. You're a gifted fortune teller, my friend. Thank you. I really miss this. I almost forgot how exciting it is to dig into the secrets of the cosmic wheel. I'm so happy for you. And I'm so thankful, Abramar. <laughs> We're just getting started. Now, go get some rest. Tomorrow, we'll make another card and do some more divination. Looking forward to it. Good night. Ooh, the door. Abramar loves you? Do you think you will ever be able to love a being such as him? Wait a minute. We had the option to to ask about his first love, Gloria. Does he just fall in love with every witch that summons him? He said he didn't have much love for his previous summons, that they weren't likable. Or not his summons, his summoners, I should say. Do you think you'll ever be able to love a being such as him? I mean... Presumably she's immortal. He's immortal. They're bound together. It, I, I suppose it can be a thing? Especially if... They're pursuing knowledge and magic across the cosmos. Today's lesson is about Earth. This is a powerful one. But weren't the other ones powerful as well? Well, of course. But this one is pure potential. Literally, power. Okay, okay. Glad to see you excited. Let's begin the lesson, please. Okay. Earth. Earth. Oh, how can I sum it up? Earth represents determination, empowerment, everything that pushes you forward. Earth is grounding, support, the source, but also direction of your force. Earth is your drive. Earth is strength. That's it. But bear in mind that it doesn't only refer to your own capabilities, but also to the support of your allies. To master one's Earth is to be aware of where to look for potential, not to be drunk on one's power. Motherly love, loyalty, sisterhood, those are also forms of Earth energy. I understand. Now, for the third part of our contract, we will seal our Earth energies together. Lay the question on me. Remember, your answers will affect your fate dramatically. For the Earth Seal, what do you want to become your main source of determination? Ooh. So we have love, the support of my friends, conquest, defeating my rivals, and myself. Personal growth and self-realization. Hmm. Well, we've been pretty independent before, but I feel bad for always choosing the third option. The whole myself, personal growth, and self-realization. The main source of determination? I don't know. I feel like if you just rely solely on yourself, that inevitably things can falter and that you need something outside of yourself to help lift you up. But conquest, it's, it's almost the same as what we had before with power and fear and revenge. You don't want to draw your sense of determination based on defeating your rivals or striking fear into others because those are all negative outcomes and that's a negative cause and effect. I think I'm going to go with love because love the support of my friends. 
because wanting to help and aid your friends, your families, your lover, those are all people that are there that can support you. And if, once again, as I said before, if you rely solely on yourself, you might falter and there will be no one there to pick you up. But now I think this is important. Your main source of determination, love, I, I think that's a lofty goal. Love, the support of my friends. Oh, that's beautiful. Pity I'm your only prospect for friendship. <laughs> Currently. Hey, I have friends. One of the reasons I'm summoned to you is to get to meet them again. So if your magic works as well as you boast, you'll get to see them again soon enough. I hope so. Otherwise, activating your Earth Seal is going to be pretty lame. Hey. Eve. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Wrong voice. Even if we can't see each other, they have my back. I know it. I don't know. She was just... She was exiled here for a millennium by Adana, the coven leader, and none of her friends stood up for her? I... I don't know. I mean, maybe Adana's word is law, but I'd feel somewhat betrayed. I see. Heartwarming. Now I will seal our earth energies together. Get ready. Ah, yeah, there it is, the gold. Ah! The power. I love earth contracts. Uh, I... I almost vomited with this one. Yes, Earth has a lot of presence. I've seen other witches puke right after sealing it. I'm one of the tough ones, then. Oh, you bet you are. You have been the first one not to cry during the ceremony. Oof. In all their years, I wonder how many contracts Abramar has made with witches. We know of at least that Gloria. And then ourselves. Although we still have fire to seal, that one is painful even to me. Oh no. You can do this. Only one to go. Now to the fun part. Let's make a card. All right. Let's go down to the Toko Tone. Tonokoma? I, I, I forgot the name of whatever this. I, it's probably Japanese now that I think about it. Let's create a card. So now we have three energies at our disposal. This will make it so that we have more to choose from. Okay, well then. So I have him sitting atop this one pillar wrapped around it, with the stars behind. It is some kind of leafy nature god. We have the ethereal Nareen. Consciousness of the many selves, the oracle only offers the strongest seeds of a strain. The sacred cane blesses the landscape. Excessive earth energy can lead to immobility. So it's determination, rightfulness, support, success, indifference, and stagnation. Oh, huh? works for him. Nicely done. Go upstairs and do a reading for me, would you? Ooh, yeah, so now we have three cards. I wonder what one we're going to draw for Abramar next, and what more we'll glean. Okay, we have three cards now. Any ideas on what to read next? Mm, I'm going to read your desire. I want to find out what your true intentions are. You want to expose your teacher. You'll give me no quarter, huh? I'm game. Do your worst, he says with those bangs. 
I need to know, for the sake of our relationship. Wait, what? Nirvana again? I, okay, I suppose that's desire again. So you feel alone, you want to find beings to share your existence with, or you want to make a difference to have an impact on the universe. He did say he was lonely. Beings to share your existence with. Yeah, because leaving me an impact is important, but also having that companionship. I'll do that, especially because, too, it gives two air and two water. You feel alone. You want to find beings to share your existence with. Come on, you don't need a card to guess that. You know I spend most of my time imprisoned or exiled. Of course, I feel alone. Oh, so if he's been exiled and imprisoned too, I wonder what his circumstances are. It's very similar to Fortuna's. It may seem obvious to you, but to us, you're a supernatural behemoth lurking on the edges of reality. No one would expect the devil to feel alone, right? Well, for the same reason I don't speak in verse, I can also feel lonely. I'm not a fictional character. I, I know, my fault. No one teaches you to empathize with otherworldly forbidden beings. I don't blame you. Witches before your time did a great job demonizing my mythos. So, basically, you would like to have friends. Ah, <laughs> oh, very much so. Poor thing. Still, I don't like to be pitied. Okay, okay. Mm, I think I'm going to draw another card. Oh, what for? You're quite a difficult character to read. I just can't tell what your deal is. In addition to your desire, I need to ask, why do you behave like this? What do you mean by this? Shh, let the card speak. Ooh, the ethereal Noreen. Determination, rifleness, support, success, indifference, and stagnation. This is the card we just created. You feel the need to make your superiority clear. You want to be my friend. You crave my approval. You try to hide your depression. Hmm. So that one's all earth. That one's some water, one air. And that one's water and earth. To hide your depression. You want to be my friend. You crave my approval. You feel the need to make your superiority clear. I don't know about that one. Oh, what do I want to try? Plus three water, one earth, three water, one air. I don't really know if I want to ask about his mental state or even infer that he's feeling a particular way. I don't necessarily feel like he's, you know, there was that little bit in the interim talking about his affections. Ah, I might want to look into that. You want to be my friend. You crave my approval. You don't mince words, eh? That's just what the card said. Yes, but you're the one phrasing it. In any case, I already told you I feel alone and that I would love to have friends to share things with. Yes, but I wouldn't have guessed that you would be interested in a friendship of a lesser being like me. I was imagining you in a godlike gang discussing the intricacies of the cosmos beyond the limitations of language. <laughs> uh, that would be very interesting indeed. But I enjoy your company a lot. I like you a lot. Well, we only have each other now, so 
Aren't we friends already? Mm, nah, doesn't feel like it yet. I'd say for now we're partners at best. But I trust that in time we can develop a beautiful friendship beyond common interest. Or at least, I hope you don't just dump me after you get what you want out of our contract. Ooh. Yeah, there... There was something about... The potential... Like, he mentioned that there were other witches in the past. We know potentially about this Gloria character, too. Dump you after you get what you want. That That's very possible. So, maybe what he's afraid of is abandonment. Oh, do I smell abandonment issues here? If you only knew what I've been put through. Oh. I'm all ears. I'm not in the mood. Not with that attitude of yours. Uh, I... I'm sorry. I just find it amusing to see the forbidden behemoth of legend dealing with and such mundane problems. Yeah, they, they're mentioning behemoths. I mean, the, the this guy right here is a behemoth. There was the other astral behemoth. I'm curious, how many of them are there? How many are known? What are their stories? Why is he so vilified? We will have to tell throughout the rest of the adventure. Hey, my uh, personal relationships are far from mundane. They are one of the greatest energies of the cosmos. Air and water, remember? Context and emotion? True, true. I'm sorry. So that's interesting, treating relationships as a form of energy or magic. Whoop, there we go. You went in for the kill with this reading, didn't you? And that's my divination style. If we don't dig into the intense stuff, we might just as well have a normal conversation. And that's also why I got uh, exiled from my coven. I mean, if you think about it, she was a little too blunt, told the truth, got everyone frightened, and Adana banished her. I wonder what she predicted, though. You're absolutely right. I can see I won't get bored with you. What now? I'm the one who needs some rest after today's session. Aw, uh, because he was reminded of his past, of the times that he had been cast aside. Go and review what we've studied so far and get ready for tomorrow's lesson. Fire is the last seal and also the most trying of the energies. Very well. Were you the leader of your coven? How would you punish someone for having summoned Abramar? Would exile suffice? Would you be able to forgive something like this? Or maybe, would you think it worthy of death? Well, that's the thing. Is Adana going, even if she is allowed to escape, will Adana seek to kill her? Ready for more? Yes. How have you found the ceremony so far? Do you want to review any elements before continuing? Hmm... I don't think so. It was pretty basic stuff. Understood. What's the matter? You're not as chipper as usual. Uh, yes. I'm sorry. Fire is usually my favorite lesson. And it marks the final step before a contract becomes effective, which I'm also looking forward to. Hmm. But? I have a bad feeling about this. That's odd. Based on your act all so far, I thought that you enjoyed the threat of dire consequences. Oh, of course I do. That kind of adrenaline is my favorite thing in the cosmos. What is it then? Look. You're right. I better stop dwelling on silly worries and focus on our training. Is he worried about what she might have to give up? Or sacrifice? I'm just moody for some reason. It's not silly. What do you say we look into it with our cards after we finish today's session? That might be a good idea. 
That's one of the perks of being summoned by a fortune teller. <laughs> ah, so true. You're on. It'll be a good challenge as the final test for this new deck. That's the Abramar I know. I need you sharp for the final lesson. Fire it is, then. This element is usually feared by most and yearned for by those with ill will. But fire is more versatile than most magic practitioners think it is. Fire represents adversity, battle, everything that is against you. Fire is challenge, intimidation, the fuel of every battle. Fire is your wrath. Fire is... Conflict. Exactly. But don't just dwell on the negative aspects of that definition. Conflict also means growth. The only time fire is bad is when you're on the losing side. And even in defeat, there's a great deal of growth. Ah, huh, perhaps referring to instances where you have trees and plants that rely on fires sweeping through and clearing out the old in order to allow the new seeds to, to take root and to open. I think there's types of coniferous trees that specifically do that. We are the living example of that. <laughs> Master your fire and you will conquer anything the cosmos throws at you. To tell you the truth, I'm more intimidated by water. What? I love water. I would have to say for myself personally, ooh, between air, water, fire, and earth, what are my favorites? So I would have to say that I remember growing up, I really liked air. Air was one of my, my favorite elements just because of the wind. I used to go outside and just listen to the breeze and the rustling of the leaves and the trees. And so, but I also really love water. I l absolutely love swimming. One of my nicknames when I was little was fish, just because I loved being underwater all the time and seeing what there was down in, I suppose I wouldn't say the depths. It would be, you know, shallow portions of lakes and swimming pools. I'd fish up various things, uh, rings, fishing lures if you're out in open water, things of that nature. And just water is also life-giving. It's all around you. This is, I suppose, same with air. We have to inhale it. But earth and fire, I think earth is often overlooked. Earth is grounding, but people might look at it and go, eh, it's kind of boring. It's not as cool. But earth, I mean, you have metals, you have, uh, you have gemstones and all sorts of crystals and things of that nature. So... It's actually, I would say, pretty versatile if, if you were to choose a particular element like that. Fire, I mean, he's saying that it has more utility, but I find it is pretty one note. It, it burns, it gives light, but mostly the burning part. I would have to say of the four, fire would be my least favorite. Ah, and now as I've gotten older, I definitely have a growing appreciation for water or earth. Air is great and all. Especially if it has storms or lightning associated with it, but yeah, I really do like water because there's also ice if you have that as a an extra component of water. But yeah, I, I suppose technically my 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 birth sign, if you go by old school astrology, is Earth. So maybe I should like Earth more. I do like collecting rocks. I love rocks. Anyways, enough of that. Uh, I suppose in the uh, comments, if you've gotten to this point, what are you? What is your favorite of the classical elements? But any point, uh, let's see. Why does she hate water so much? Oh, okay, so she says I'm actually quite fond of fire. Ha 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 ha! Ah, maybe that's why we get along so well. Well, I wonder if he has fire. Uh, I don't know if those are brows or nostrils, but he has. I mean, he does have a nose here. I mean, it seems like he definitely has flames. Now, the final contract. This answer will affect your fate profoundly. For the fire seal, what will you sacrifice to access my magic? Oh, oh no. So we have my immortality, 
the coven or the life of whoever I love the most. Oh no. And so far we had the whole, we had pity. We were going to be pitied at some point. We were going to pursue knowledge. We were going to have something drive us forward with love. The love of our friends is going to be a sense of determination. So we're, I wonder if we're almost constructing our journey through the game here. So this is supposed to be at the end. So my immortality that come in the life of who I love most. Okay, I'll go through each one one by one. So with immortality, that is the least impactful. Because with the coven and the life of whoever I love most, that puts the price or the sacrifice on someone else. Uh, with my immortality, I presume that you'd be the only one sacrificing anything at all. And so it seems as though in this universe, I mean, she was banished for a thousand years and has already spent 200 here. Witches in this are immortal. And it's interesting because for humans, the great one of the greatest pursuits that at least people ever want to achieve in say science would be to unlock the secret of immortality and so and one of the things that defines our lives is just the process of growing older and passing away and so i can't imagine being immortal and then choosing a mortal life I suppose the, an exception would be in the case of, say, Arwen and Aragorn in Lord of the Rings. Uh, Arwen was willing to sacrifice her immortal life as an elf to be with Aragorn because even though he was a Dunedain, he was a ranger and had some elf blood in him as well, Aragorn was supposed to live for far longer than any human would, but still far less than any elf would. And I could see that in that it would be acceptable to be readily sacrifice your immortality because you wouldn't want the pain of being without your beloved companion through all the centuries thereafter. I mean, it, uh, something of that sort where you would want your life to end about the same time as your your significant other or those that you care for most, that you don't want to go through the ages watching everyone die around you. But I can only imagine that if if Fortuna sacrifices their immortality at the very end of the game, it's going to be a sad scene where Abramar is, you know, by her bedside and she's and she's aged and dying and passes away and he once again with the abandonment point, no, why do you abandon me? Oh, that'd be so sad. I don't know. I mean it would be it'd be a good sacrifice, but a sad one at that to sacrifice all of the uh, sacrifice one's future essentially then we have the coven ooh sacrifice the coven uh, that could mean many things though does it mean that you're sacrificing their lives because this one specifically says the life of whoever i love the most but sacrificing the coven could mean anything it could mean giving them up never being able to join them again, having to leave that coven and wander alone or go elsewhere. It, it's up for interpretation what sacrificing the coven means. It could mean sacrificing all of them, at which point this would be far worse than the singular life of those you love or your own immortality. That would be multiple people, presumably your friends too. At the same time, the coven, they were the one that banished you here, or ones that banished you here, and specifically Adana. So that's a tough one. What does sacrifice mean in this respect? Because my immortality cuts your life short, the life of whoever I love the most, but this? What could it mean? The life of whoever I love most. Oh, that one's so sad. I'm. I'm loath to choose this one because we did have an inkling in that one in that one section before that Abramar might be the one that has fallen for a character or might be falling for a character. And how ironic would that be if 
they have this deal to use his power and it ends up he be, he's the one that she loves the most. Whoopsie. How does that work out in, in the contracts uh, case? Because then would he just perish? I... It would defeat the purpose of things. And then the other problem is if she, if we do encounter more characters throughout the game, I would feel very cautious about ever interacting with anyone because you know that the person that you fall in love with is going to be the one that dies. Because you're sacrificing their life. There's also the possibility that you never fall in love with anyone, but once again, that would mean Abermar would probably be the one that gets sacrificed. Uh, this is a tough one. And I can't imagine sacrificing the life of those you love most. And the thing is, I don't know who's in the coven. All I know is of Adana and maybe a couple of friends, but... I think this is, this is a little cliche, the sacrificing my immortality. I don't know how I would fare going through the game, knowing about the the life of whoever I love the most, because it could be Abramar, it could be any of the other NPCs that we meet. I don't want to lead towards the coven because that's a, that's a potentially massive group of people, but sacrifice them could very well mean just leaving them as opposed to killing them. Uh, I'll do the coven. The coven. Wow, that is brutal. Why? It doesn't mean they'll all die. They could just disband, right? Oh, could you imagine that? That would be the self-fulfilling prophecy, wouldn't it? Of Fortuna, because she predicted the coven's fall, being exiled and then summoning Abramar and specifically sacrificing the coven, at, potentially meaning they could disband. That would be the self-fulfilling prophecy of because they did this to Fortuna, she turns around and actually causes the coven to disband. I mean, it's kind of poetic justice, if you will. Yes, or they could be absorbed by a more powerful coven. Or they could all fuse into a single, all too powerful witch. I've seen it happen. Really? What? There are many possibilities, but still, to use everyone you know as a, pay as a payment is wild. Do you want to reconsider? Uh, oh, it looks like maybe we'll be able to see what he says about each of them. Okay, well, let's see what immortality says. My immortality. Oh, wow. Are you sure about that? You live a maximum of another 60 years after you pay the price. Plus, you won't be able to live in space anymore. You'll have to go down to Earth and live among humans. Do you want to reconsider? Uh, let's see. Differently. How about the life of whoever I love most? Uh, that's a harsh one. I've seen other witches choose to sacrifice the person they love, and it always hurts more than they expected. This will leave an everlasting dent in your soul. Do you want to reconsider? Yeah, so... Has to live amongst the humans with the immor immortality- well, loss of immortality. I think I love the most, but I'm worried that it's going to be Abramar or any of the NPCs that we meet along the way. I don't want to condemn the whole coven, but as he said, it could mean any one of a number of different things. We don't know what the sacrifice is going to be. Could just be a disbandment. Could be that they have to join another coven. Could be that they get absorbed into a singular witch. I don't know. I think I want to find out. Plus, I think I like the idea of the self-fulfilling prophecy bit. No, this is my final answer. As you wish, I will etch your decision into the cosmic wheel and pray it doesn't break you apart when the time comes to pay the price. Brace yourself. 
There we go. Now we have nine fire. Uh, uh, can't breathe. This pain, it burns. It's breaking my atoms apart. I love it. Uh, help, help me. Fortuna. Cutscene time. All the elements together. Oh, is that Fortuna? She's on a beach. Is this Earth? Ah, witch mode. Oh, and she has a third eye. Okay, someone with a coin. A deer? Okay. A couple of female characters. Ooh, what is that being with the three faces? These must be a number of the characters that we meet along the way. Oh, <gasps> Abermark eats it? I wonder what kind of villainous force that is. Wake up. Fortuna, wake up. Chapter 1, Arbitrage. What? What happened? Sorry, I had to wake you up. You've been asleep for a couple of days. You dropped dead after we sealed the fire contract. Thought it might be too much, so I let you rest. I feel dizzy. I had the weirdest dreams. Oh yeah? About what? Can't remember. But it felt prom premonitory. I feel bad for waking you up, but you have some business to attend to. What do you mean? Look at the window. You have got a visitor. That falcon? That's a familiar from an arbiter. What's an arbiter? The arbitrage. Office is an organ. Oh, the arbitrage office. Is an organism composed of former witches, unaffiliated with any coven, that ensures no witch is operating outside the laws of the magical pact. They also rule over conflicts between different covens and rarely interfere in the internal affairs or with internal affairs. It was founded about 4,000 years ago, so it makes sense you don't know of them. Yeah, this happened during my slumber. Why were they created? Well, both the Arbiters and the Magical Pact were created after an especially bloody witch war that ended with our coven burning 87 witches inside of a white star. What? Her coven burned 87 witches inside of a white star? Okay, now I don't feel so bad about deciding that the coven should be the ones that get sacrificed. Ooh, boy. They had a whole organization made just to police them. Brutal. To avoid future atrocities, some witches vowed to stop using magic and focus exclusively on keeping the peace. In the beginning, it was a group of devotees who wanted to avoid tragedy, but nowadays it's mainly composed of outcasts that have, have to serve the arbitrage office as lifelong punishment. Oh, well, why wasn't she just given that as a lifelong punishment? Wow, things have gotten a lot bleaker since I was last put to sleep. This all happened before my time, but I'm more afraid of having witch wars than witch cops. And what do you think the Arbiter wants? Maybe they noticed I summoned you? That's impossible. My arts are untraceable. Then there's only one way to find out. Let's invite her over. Sure, I'll make myself invisible whenever you get a visit. Also, you have some energy pooled from sealing the fire contract, in case you want to expand your deck before inviting the Arbiter over. Okay, plus I still owe you a reading. Right? Uh, don't worry about it. There will be time for that. Okay, okay, but you're not off the hook. We'll look into what worries you, eventually. As if I could escape you. Ooh, so yeah, let's go make some cards first. Because we might have use of them, especially when dealing with this falcon. Let's create more cards. Ooh, 
There we go. Now we're done with this horror beast. Pathos. The Moonstone Temple is a gateway to illumination. They can channel a power trip. The caress of the seed nurtures mercy and introspection. The mirror dispels that well, dispels what isn't true. We have determination, rightfulness, introspecting, guardian, ego, mercy, and wellness. Oops, I forgot when shifting everything I need to shift the eyes into place. Oh well, that's the card. All right, let's create another card. Let's go with something fiery, because, well, we pretty much only have fire left. All right, and we have toxicity. Overflowing with hate and regret, the quicksand taints its visitors, a love too intense. On the verge of turning into hatred, the asteroid foretells imminent tragedy. The overstimulated fire energy becomes a cleaning power, death and rebirth. Meanings, deception, the unknown, rejection, bad omen, change and rebirth. All right, and I don't think we have enough energy for other cards. So let's see what we have. So we have toxicity. We have Pathos. We have the Ethereal Noreen. We have Nirvana. And we have the Standing Ovation. I think that's a good mix. You have something about leadership and purpose, introspection, determination, stagnation. Also, rightfulness and determination. But the ego, mercy, and wellness. Yeah, Deception, the Unknown, Rejection. Yeah, so it's good to have always one bad card. All right. So we have two new cards. Let's go up and talk with the Falcon. I wonder how many cards we'll be able to have in our deck eventually. I think at least 20. I know that with the Arcana... It's uh, a little bit over 20. Was it 23? Okay. Let's see what the Falcon has to say. Dear Fortuna, my name is Thea, and I write to you from the Arbitrage Office. Blah, blah, blah. And I write to you from the Arbitrage Office. Your personal situation caught the attention of my superiors, who tasked me with reviewing your case. I would like to interview you regarding your exile and write a plea to your coven's leader to revisit your case if we judge the punishment to be excessive. Yours faithfully, Thea. Arbiter Badge 210. Rank, Waxing Crescent. Oh, so it looks like they're using uh, phases of the moon. So we have invite? Not yet. Ah, let's invite her in. Looks like they have purple and silver or white as their garb. Oh yeah, and look at that. I wonder if those are, in fact, waxing crescents. Thanks for having me. My name is Thea, Arbiter Badge 210. Thank you for coming, Arbiter. I really appreciate the office paying attention to my case. Who even input the case? I, I don't know, did one of her sisters? inform them? I've been isolated for 200 years so far. That's precisely why I'm here. The Arbitrage Office recently discovered your situation and we are worried that it may go awry for the community. Excessive punishments beget rancor, and a thousand year long exile? That's the perfect recipe to build up a lot of bad blood. Um, lady, I think you came a little too late. I just, uh, made a deal with a with a giant behemoth and uh, for a lot of magic and what did I sacrifice? Mm, my coven. I'm <laughs> obviously not saying that aloud, but whoop, bad blood's already been uh, been made. And we all know what a witch can do with a surplus of bad blood. Uh, 
but I am here to help you. Let me know about your case and we'll look for a way to make you feel better. Thank you. I already had a meeting with Adana, the leader of your witch clan. Adana told me that you predicted the fall of your coven. She explained to me that she didn't punish you for that though. She punished you because of how you handled it. Apparently, you plunged the coven into chaos, giving ill advice to any witch, telling them to prepare for the end times. And those actions almost destroyed the coven before its time. So, she decided to exile you, and deprive you of your deck so that you can meditate on the range and meaning of your powers. Hmm. Now, that's the official version. I'm interested in what you have to say. Do you think that what you did was wrong? So should I I should have gone to Adana or no a premonition that grave should be disclosed to the community? Uh, uh I, I I think that people should be told because if you just leave it in the hands of the powerful, who knows if they're just going to conceal it for their own gain. No. A premonition that that grave should be disclosed to the community. So you don't agree with your leader's judgment? That is not dangerous per se, but it's a bad ingredient to add to the pot of in imprisonment. What would you have done then? If the end were nigh, you'd like to know, right? I shouldn't give my opinion. I have to act as a neutral party, Fortuna. Next question. Do you think that your punishment is fair? <laughs> I lie. Yes, I trust Adana's judgment. Absolutely not. This is way too excessive. I would say it's too excessive. A thousand years? I mean, it might not be long in witch time, but... I I can't imagine what she would do. It would drive her mad. Absolutely not. This is way too excessive. I understand. Hardly anyone would accept this kind of sentence. How are you coping with the centuries of isolation? It's horrible, help me please. At first it was hard, but now I think it can manage. No, no. We're we're gonna we're gonna say how it is, and hopefully the arbiters will intervene. It is funny though that we just summoned Abramar and now they're finally coming to intervene. This is it, this is horrible. Help me please. Oh no! Oh, we need to fix your situation. Top priority. Thank you. I think we can at least alleviate your sentence somehow. I still don't understand why Adana deprived you of your tarot deck. I mean, if you're isolated, what does she care if you have your magic or not? Yeah, it's not like she'd be able to tell anything. That's something I'm supposed to reflect on while exiled. Oh, that's a pity. Because I'd have loved to have had my fortune read. Anyway, before I leave... As an arbiter, I'm obliged to ask. Anything to confess? Actually, I'm... I am crafting a new deck for divination. Oh, wow. That's bold. But I don't think that what you're doing is illegal. Adana took your tarot deck from you, but she doesn't have authority over your new creations. Yet. I'm sure she won't be happy to hear it, though. You don't need to report to Adana, right? I trust in the office's neutrality. Of course, unless you break the magical pact or it becomes relevant during a trial, we won't disclose sensitive information from our investigation. In any case, what I'm crafting isn't a tarot deck. It's something new. Oh, really? Can can I see it? Would you like a reading? <clears throat> As an arbiter, it is my duty to make sure that your new project doesn't break the magical pact, so... Oh, I would love a, very, a reading very much. Yes, please. <laughs> That's just completely out of the blue, but okay. It'll be my pleasure. Is there something you want to ask the deck? Mm, I want to know what's, in f what's the future regarding my career as an arbiter. Very well. I'm going to draw two cards for you. The first one to look for opportunities and good omens, and the second one to warn you about possible challenges or adversities. Oh, that's scary. Would you prefer not to know? 
Oh, no, please, go ahead. All right, here we go. The good and the bad. Nirvana. I mean, that looks like a good sign. In the future, you and I will become allies, or you're going to meet someone really special that's going to change your life. Ooh. So I can get two earth and two water. Three water or one air. You're going to meet someone really special that's going to change your life? Or in the future, you and I will become allies. This, I feel like, is kind of steering me towards uh, swaying her neutrality, though. At the same time, I already have one water. I don't have any air, though, either. Hmm. I don't know. I think I'll do this. In the future, you and I will become allies. Oh, really? That's what the card says. Since it came up in the good slot, I'm sure this alliance is going to be very fruitful. Or at least it will be for you, since it's your fortune that we're reading. I'll make sure this is something good for both of us. I will never deceive someone who helped me. Provided you don't break the law, of course. <laughs> uh, uh, I know, I know. Alright, the bad. Ooh, pathos, really? I see war, you'll be sent into combat. Oh my, you're going to kill a witch. You will suffer a critical permanent injury or wound? What? Oh, don't worry. Everything is going to be all right. I don't know about that. I see war you'll be sent into combat. You're going to kill a witch? Oh, that wouldn't be good. I don't know. A lot of these omens are bad. The last one seems disingenuous. I don't like the idea of her suffering a permanent injury. Or killing a witch. I mean, there very well could be war. Ooh, what to do? I mean, there very well could be a conflict of sorts. I don't know, let's do this. I see war. You'll be sent into combat. What? What do you mean, war? I can see a high-scale conflict that will require arbiters to go into battle. Oh my god, but that is huge! Oh, I have to ward everyone! N no, no, wait, wait. Uh, don't do that. I have, I have experience in ringing the catastrophe bell, and it doesn't bring any good. But I can't just do nothing about it. Precisely. That's why I'm imprisoned here. Let the higher-ups know, and no one else. You don't want to suffer my fate. And keep my name off the record, if you can. Uh, okay. I don't know if I'll be able to do that, but I'll protect my source as much as I can. I promise. Thank you. Oh my. War. Oh, okay. I'll protect you all. Oh, that is our duty. Thank you. Well, what do you think of my new deck? Hmm. Oh, it's the pity one. That was the air. It was just great. I really loved it. You are a very special witch, Fortuna. I'm so sorry that you're enduring such a difficult punishment. I can tell you're a beautiful person and that you didn't mean any evil with your divination. No one with good intentions should receive a punishment this severe. You know what? This isn't fair. I'm going to lift that ban on visitation. Wait, wow. Uh, can you really do that? I just requested a permit from the main office. Ah, huh. so you see, being pitied in this situation is actually kind of nice, because it means that she's going to allow us to see people again. It'll become effective as soon as my Arbiter's notebook gets updated with a moon stamp. 
Arbitrage forms are updated in the master grimoire as soon as my pen touches the paper. All of what I've written so far is already in the office archives. You girls sure are efficient, eh? There are witch covens all around the universe. We can't afford to go back and forth to the moon temple all the time. Oh yeah, I did use the moon temple. Makes sense. And it's official. You can now receive guests to your cute asteroid home. Cute asteroid. Ah, uh, this makes me happier than I can express. Aww. I can't let you rot here all alone. Thank you so much. No worries. I just had to. You don't deserve this. Do you want me to let your coven know? Hmm. Just let Jasmine and Dahlia know for now. I'm not ready to go public yet. It's been 200 years. Oh, poor thing. Isolation must have done a number on you. Don't worry. I'll send a falcon to each of them. Thanks again. Well, I'm so sorry, uh, but I should be going now. It's been a pleasure to meet you, and thank you very much for the reading. Even if it was so ominous. Take care. Or, take care. Please, let me know if you need anything. I'm here to help. Bye. Ooh, I wonder if what I decided in the reading is going to have an effect too. And with the four elements unlocked and that final story hook, I think this is a good stopping point for my first impression of the Cosmic Wheel Sisterhood. A highlight of this game is definitely the act of card making and using your creations to interpret the futures of others. I started another file just to see what happens when you mix the same card components together and it seems like the final card name and meaning like pathos, nirvana, and toxicity, are consistently tied to the card combinations. With at least a dozen fascinating locations, creatures, and objects to combine, that means hundreds of potential cards to craft your own deck. And on that note, it's needless to say, but I love the pixel art in this game's soundtrack. It really transports you to a world in which witches make their home among the stars. Abramar, our behemoth familiar, is definitely charming and otherworldly. He's my favorite character thus far, and I hope we get to learn more about him and his mysterious past, and whether or not he has a habit of becoming smitten with his summoners. Gleaming that bit about Gloria, and that he may have already fallen for Fortuna, is kind of telling. I also look forward to meeting members of Fortuna's coven, and I hope I won't regret my decision to offer them in some as-of-yet undisclosed fashion as part of the contract. With all the potential card combinations, contract options, and ways to interpret divinations, it's possible there are several diverging narratives that can be explored, so I foresee this being a game that you can replay again and again. The Cosmic Wheel Sisterhood explores mature themes like intimacy, depression, discrimination, and self-harm, so I'd probably recommend it to older teens and adult players. From what I've experienced beyond this introduction, the exploration of these themes mirrors the issues many have to grapple with in their relationships and daily life. Fantasy is a wonderful medium for presenting a myriad of facets of life, and games like the Cosmic Wheel Sisterhood have meaningful messages that can be imparted through roleplay and decision making. I'm definitely looking forward to playing this the rest of the week, and if you are interested in playing the Cosmic Wheel Sisterhood, crafting your own cards, and charting your own course through the narrative, it's available today, August 16th, on PC and the Nintendo Switch. Well, with all that, thank you all so much for watching, and hope to see you next time.